Senator Ojudu, yes. from journalism, being a media manager yes. to the Senate, what's the difference? Well, it's a lot of difference. You know, you, as, as a journalist, you are outside. As a politician, you are now inside. Sometimes, as a journalist, I thought I, I knew all about the country. But I think I've, I've, I, have a, I have a better insight now into why things are the way they are, why things are not, you know, falling in place in Nigeria. And for me, it's been, it's been very efficient. If I had uh, died as a journalist mm -hmm. and I didn't have this experience, for, it would have been a big loss for me. Do you feel sometimes frustrated when you're in the Senate that things are not going the way yes, you think? Yes, of course, because I, I see that there are problems. Actually, if we put our minds to it, that could be solved, mm. you know. And, uh, but we are not putting our minds to it sufficiently. And uh, that, for me, is very frustrating. Mm. Or we are not seeing it the way we should see it mm. as people who are elected to solve problems. Yeah. And if I, if I would ask you, when you're in the Senate, yes. And you look at yourself as a senator. Yes. You look back to those days during the Abasha regime. Yes. Do you think this is a democracy we people actually fought for? Well, it is not. It is not. It, certainly, it is not. You mm. know, again, it's our fault yeah. because we didn't get our strategy and right. tactics right yeah. when you know Abasha died. Mm. If we had all, if we are not turned our back on the, on 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 the elective office yeah. at that period of time. We probably wouldn't be where we are today. It was too late mm. for us to realize that we have to participate. By the time we got in, the interests have been entrenched. And so you think, we, you think those who fought for democracy should have come in, gone into pol politics earlier? Oh, of course, of course. If, if Beko had gone into elective office, if, if Beko were the president of the Senate in 1999 or, or something like that, mm. you know, or just a member of the or in the House of Representatives or a member of the Senate, or Agbakoba had been there, Falan had been governor in this state, or had gone to the Senate. Things wouldn't have been the way they are today. All of us across the country, if we had decided that we were going to be part of, uh, be but, part of it. Yeah. But the argument is that you've had a lot of activists going into the Senate, yes. you know, yourself, yes. Okoyemi, like Bamidele, yes. Ushie, I can name several. Yes. But no one has stopped receiving the Jumbo pay. Well, it's not, you see, people put a lot of emphasis on this Jumbo pay. It is not about the pay. You know, when they talk about the pay, and I look at my colleagues, yeah. what they suffer from, honestly, I'm not, I'm not joking now, and the kind of demands put on them, and I've said this in several occasions, mm -hmm. you know, there is a misconception of what the role of a lawmaker is in a society. Mm -hmm. And that is what Nigeria is paying for. If a lawmaker is not just seen as somebody elected to go and make law, mm. there will be no end to how much you have to pay that lawmaker. Mm. If a lawmaker is seen as not different from the executive, who must execute projects, mm. provide water, provide road, buy transformer, you know, pay for the medical bills of his constituents, mm. pay for their education, pay for, uh, you know, assist in building their homes, then there will be no end. So what you're trying to say is that as a senator, yes. you've got pressure from people making demands. The that pressure is massive, it's enormous, and it is killing. It is killing, I'm telling you. Many were afraid when we were leaving and closing for the year to even say they are going back home. Why? Because so, they cannot even muster enough resources you know, to buy those things they are going to buy for people at Christmas. Some just you know, uh, bought for people during the Eid. That's the Muslim festival, mm. you know. And it's a lot of money. Some will tell you, I'm buying two trailer loads of rice to give to my constituents. I'm buying this number of cows. I'm buying this number of turkey. I'm buying these cartons of wine. You know, where is the money coming from? Nobody is budgeting for that. But it is from this so-called jumbo pay that they have to make that available. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I tell you, little is left for them. Look, any senator is going home on the weekend, and particularly for those who go home regularly, it's also a burden. Mm -hmm. You cannot say you are going to your constituency on a weekend, that is, leaving on Friday to come to return to Abuja either on Sunday or Monday morning, if you don't have at least one million naira, you, you cannot dare go home. So what can we do to stop this rental system? And I'm saying this, you know, and I've told some of my colleagues who care to listen, come. We are just leaving the Yoruba proverb that says that Oluwoko la aniba otoshi is otoshi. That is, one rich man in the midst of 200 poor persons mm. is also a poor man. 
people will come to you because you are the only one who can afford mm -hmm. to solve their problem. Can we stop a bit and see if it is possible for us to, to live better ourselves by looking at the problems confronting society, yeah. solve these problems at macro level, not at micro. Mm -hmm. You know, the person you give money to go and eat today, who is unemployed, will come back again to you tomorrow. That you gave him money yesterday and not being able to give today mm -hmm. will not make him like you. But suppose you work out a scheme of, of making sure that people are employed, mm -hmm. they can work and they pay and feed themselves. Mm -hmm. That makes you a friend of that person forever. So let us look at the problem. Let us sit down, put our thinking caps on, and solve this problem. Mm -hmm. Problem of unemployment, problem of a lack of infrastructure, medical facilities, education facilities. You know, let our people live a better life mm -hmm. that they will even have the same dignity of, of, of not wanting to come to you to beg for money. In the past, a Kanekitima will not come to you to beg for money. Yeah. If you are eating and they come in and you ask them, they will not eat. Mm -hmm. They think that it's, it is not right for you mm -hmm. to look beggarly to your neighbor. But now, all of those mm -hmm. is gone. So what you do know? you do with your own constraint allowance? The thing is that they, nobody pays me constraint allowance. And I keep telling so how about the 18 what, million, what they, yeah, 100 they, million? No, 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 it's not true. What, they, they don't, don't know the difference between what you earn, what is your running cost, and those things they call constituency projects. For constituency projects, you are not given cash. You nominate a project, and it's done in other parts of the world. Mm. A senator in America can say, look, I want a military base in my constituency. Believing that if there is a military base, it will provide employment, employment. for the other community. Here, you are qualified as a senator annually to nominate a budget, a project that will be written into the budget. Mm. And then that will be domiciled in the, in the federal government ministry. Mm. And they then have the responsibility of going there to execute. They advertise the bid, they open the bid, they choose the best person, in their own opinion, mm. who they think is qualified to execute the project. It is now, it now beholds on you, as a senator representing that constituency, to ensure that that project is not abandoned, that they execute the, the project. Okay, for your senatorial district, yes. how have they been able to benefit from the Oh, oh we, have, we, have, look, we have done well in the sense that, look, I'm not interested who's, you know, in which contractor you are. The thing is that, get this thing done. Mm. Last year, I said, look, okay, there are rural areas in my, in my constituency. They needed water. They go to the brooks to go and fetch water. Do borehole. I executed 57 boreholes, mm. you know. And even when a few of them were not working, I wrote a letter to the Senate president. I wrote to the woman in charge of MDG. I said, look, some of your contractors have not done a good job. Please recall them to site. And then I then did an advert on local radio. List the name of the contractors, their telephone number. I said, any community where the job is not well done, that you start calling those contractors. So for me, that was it. In this year now, MDG project, I'm doing three town halls, community center in Igbe Moikiti in Okimesi and Ikoro, that is one. Mm. Then at the level of the one that, that is written into the budget, you know, which, you know, it's about 250 million per senator, nobody gives you money, against domicile. Mm. Last year, we domiciled our own in a Greek ministry. Mm. We want to irrigate 1,000 hectares of land. When you irrigate it, we pass it out to young farmers and ensure that they produce things that can be bought from them and, and so that they can live a better life. So we were not even comfortable that the money was domiciled in, in rural Greek because we're not too sure they were going to do it the way we like. We then approached UNDP, mm. you know, and said, look, can you take on this project for us to execute? They said, nobody has ever asked them to do so. But if we can get the ministry to transfer the money to them, they will even add catapult funding. And, and we successfully did that. UNDP now called in uh, FAO and they are partnering and they are executing that project. Yeah. I'll come to national politics yes. now. With the way the country seems to be polarized, it appears that the country is more polarized than it has ever never been before, yes. before now. Yes. Do you, are you scared for 2015 in terms of... I'm, I'm not just scared for 2015, I'm scared for tomorrow. Anything can happen in this country anytime. Any mistake, you know, any single mistake made by anybody now could lead to the disability of Nigeria. Do your colleagues feel this tension? Unfortunately, not a larger percentage of them do. They believe Nigeria will continue to go on. Because if we feel it, then we'll see that we're in an emergency. Mm -hmm. And then get together and say, ladies and gentlemen, forget even about people for our own self-interest are, are going to be affected. Mm -hmm. Let us solve this problem. Let us come together and salvage Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But it's as 
one of the former presidents told me one day that Nigeria is politics to us is a game. You know, Nigeria will forever remain. Nothing can happen to it. Even when it is going to is going to fall, we find a way of pulling it back. But it, it might know. be right though that, because that is with faith. But it might yeah. be right because in the sense that if the ruling elites are the one benefiting from yes. the country, they yes. can find a way of retrieving it from by the time we come, that would be too late for us to, to retrieve the country. Now let's come to the politics of Ekiti State. Yes. Your name has been mentioned several times yes. as one of the reasons for the crisis, crisis within the uh, APC. Yes. With Bamide Leokoyemi now wanting to run yes. as governor, and he feels, you know, um, he should be the one sitting. What, where do you stand in this crisis? Well, for me, he has the right to run, and I wish him good luck. But what I can still tell the world is that Okoyemi will not acquire over 10 percent of the votes in the state come 2014. Honestly, I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking as a politician. Yeah. I'm talking as a journalist yeah. who, who can pick up the indices and analyze and go around and see the way things are, as I would have done mm -hmm. when I was doing an well, how was come your, your party couldn't manage this crisis before? No, Okoyemi has made up his mind long ago. It is not just now. You know, that he has made his mind up long ago. I'll, I'll give you an instance. When Payemi was being inaugurated, you know, Okoyemi turned to a friend of mine and said, ha, huh? Hey, hey, will this boy be able to do this thing? Mm. And I, I saw grain. That was great, like grain in his eyes. Mm. And that friend told him, look, he will do it. He will all cooperate with him. So how do you assess the present governor of the state? Of course he has done well. You cannot say 100%. Yeah. Nobody can with the little money available. And the state our people are in. You cannot, you are not able to do 100%. But again, his government has been a game changer. Mm. Things have changed here. Come on the streets of Ekiti, go travel around. I, you know, I, I've traveled around Nigeria. Even people that are taking 40 billion a month, as opposed to our less than 2.5 billion a month. Uh, you know, the kind of development I've seen, I've not seen in those, in those places. So for me, look, the capital was in the past like a rural, rural place. The roads were very bad. The roads were very bad. Things are, are changing. The roads are better now. I went to a school that was established in 1960. As at, as at uh, three, four years ago, there was no classroom with window panes mm. in that school. All the floors of the classroom were, were, you know, were having portals and all that. But those schools today have been renovated across the city. Mm. You know, anywhere you drive to in the city, hardly will you see a, a but, motorable road. But how come, that is going on. How come but people... one change that has taken place, which is significant. Mm. Prior to now, people have shown contempt to us as city people. We are bush people. We cannot, you know, manage relationship. We are this, we are that. You know, there is a, a lot of rebranding that has taken place in the kitty by the kind of people we now have that are, that are managing our, our affairs. And, and I'm so glad about that because one Irini sin is on your job. The way you, you are saying is the way people relate with you. Now nobody will say, oh, I have an equity governor who is a thug. Mm. I have an equity governor who cannot even speak English or who is very, who is dirty, who cannot relate with other Nigerians and all of that. No. Now we have people who are well-educated, who are sophisticated, who are among some of the best in the world. And they are doing things in a manner mm. that is making us proud. Well, of some them. of the arguments I've heard on the yes. street from quite a number of people yes. is that, yes, he's, he's done the road, yes. he's doing well, yes. they, they feel okay yes. that he's yes. doing his job. Well, he, he doesn't relate with the people. He doesn't come down to their level. No, we, we cannot all be populists. Fire Oshie will come. Yeah, eat, and eat go with to the motor park and drink uh, and take uh, yeah. local gin yeah. with the people. If you have not been using, you used to look, taking local gin because you are now a politician. We now go and start taking Igbo or local gin. Mm. You know, he knows. He's focused. He knows what he wants to do. Mm. He has assessed the problem of the people. He believes that he can solve those problems without having to go to the extent of going to drink Luca gin at the motor park, you know, that kind of thing. And that does not solve any problem. That, I, that I'm around, you know, eating, uh, eating corn and this thing on the street with you does not mean I, I love you more than the person who is swatting in his office trying to find solution to your problem. I would not want that we are remembering today after so many years that I had been in government. Yeah. Never went to motor park to go and drink a guguru. He was not a populist, mind you. Yeah. But he was able to put himself in the heart of the people mm -hmm. by identifying what, what problems they face mm -hmm. and sitting up day and night mm -hmm. working at the solutions of those problems. You may not be popular with people now, but they will remember you years to come. 
that it was when you were there that you changed their life for, for good. What if I tell you that the reason you're staunchly supporting Governor yes. Fire Mina is so that you're positioning yourself to be governor after no, his No, no. I mean, I was actively one of the people who saw that he's capable of what he's doing now and went to mobilize him to come and do what he's doing. It, it is not just an individual. Again, it's about a movement, mm -hmm. you know, that, okay, we want a change. Okay, who among us at this present time can best lead that move to bring about a change? And that's, and that's, and that's what he has done. Okay, and I'm proud of him for that. It's not that I'm not critical of him in, 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 in some certain areas, areas yeah. in certain areas. But again, in my estimation, he has done well enough within the limits of the resources available to him. Okay, Lee, apart from the challenge from Okoyemi Bamidele, who is now in the Labour Party, yes. the PDB, was, they're screaming, breathing down your neck. The, those ones, I mean, where you have, you know, close to 21 uh, factions in the party, mm -hmm. honestly, you know, let them come. Mm -hmm. Let them come. Even if they adopt Okoyemi as their candidate, look, Okoyemi will come and tell us, you know, the Okoyemi I know, let him come and tell us what he has done for the people. Mm -hmm. Here and wherever. You know, what is his program? What is he going to do? Is he going to remove the roads that have been built and build, and build another one? Is he going to demolish the schools? Mm. Is he going to turn, you know, overboard all of the tourism projects we are, we are carrying on? Yeah. What exactly? I've never read a single line of, from Okoyemi on what he wants to do in the kitty. Mm. Yes, he said that Kaudi has done well. He has done his best. He cannot do more than his best. But I want to do better. Mm. You know, that is too vague and too juvenile for do me. You, do, you you miss, do you miss journalism? Oh, so much. I, too, I still practice one way or the other. I remember last time we, I went to the Northeast to look at the, uh, the damage that was done by the Boko Haram. I was compelled to take photographs. I was compelled to do an article, you know, and I, I did a cover story on, on, it. on it for my, for my magazine. You so know. if you leave the Senate, would you see yourself going back to... In fact, that would be the best that would happen to me. Because now I can do a lot, of, a lot more writing. I can direct my journalists to places where they can get the information they require. Because now I have more insight into how these things work. Sometimes you get really very irritated with people on social media. Yes, because, you see, they, they don't take time to study things. You know, you, you, a story comes up on social media. You read the headline. You know, you know about that. Look, I, I, I get, I part, I'm, I'm on social media myself. Yes. And I post something. Within a second, somebody will have clicked like. Yeah. Of almost a three-page uh, material, yeah. and I said, "What are you liking? When you've not is it read me it? that you are liking, or the title of what I posted? Mm -hmm. you know, if it is photograph, yes, you could say immediately I have seen the face. Yes. I like the face. Yes. So take time, read, ask yourself questions, mm -hmm. raise issues, not just then abusing. Mm -hmm. Abuse. I t you know I have a daughter who is very active on social media, yeah. and I I would say, look, when I was your age, you know we abuse." But we also organize. We organize, yeah. Go. This, social, this Twitter, Facebook alone, yeah. we're not seeing Nigeria's problem. No. If your generation do, go, do not go and organize yeah. and just use these mediums as your voice, mm. you will not get anywhere. You will end up being frustrated the way we are frustrated. And in spite of even our having come out earlier to organize, mm. you guys are not organizing. Mm. If you think APC is not doing the thing you expect it to do, go and join the parties and change, and change APC. Mm. Look, if you throw 1,000 young men and women, mm. you know, into APC in Lagos, whatever it is they think is wrong with APC, they will just be able to change so, from, the, from the grassroots. So despite yes. all the uh, abuse, insult, and yes. misunderstanding, yes. You, we are not going to see you run away from the platform. No, I won't. Do. Uh, why would I? Because why would I, why would I not we have one of your people? colleagues, Professor Adeyeye, and he's never back. Are you going to have a word with him that we need well, people I've, I've had to discuss this. Again, Adeyeye is a, you know, is a professor. He's an intellectual. And uh, he's an elderly man. He's, he's close to 70 now. When an 18-year-old person who does not even know his history just speak on him and say, you're a thief. Mm -hmm. You know, you are one of the who rule in Nigeria. Had he has been going to jail in Nigeria since the early 60s, for God's sake. In fact, we should not be engaging people like that to come and fight our battle for us again. We should be fighting that. So when you see that, he, he thinks that, you know, why are you not trying to know where I'm coming from? Why I'm making the journey I'm making? Why most, my position is this? Why are you not engaging me based on ideas? Why are you abusing me? You know, it, it, somebody of that age could get irritated. Yeah. But in my own case, I just feel that we must, I mean, like I said, I have about four of my children yeah. on, uh, social on social media. I also need to assist them to understand exactly what the things, what the issues are, what the problems are. Just like 
the case of the so-called child marriage thing. Mm. And I knew that people were off mark in their comments, in their understanding of it. And I said, look, let me provide this information. information. Even when I knew that my colleagues were not going to like it, I did. You know, and I think at the point it was able to, to clarify things for an extent. So if there is none of us, yesterday, the no day for yesterday, a colleague of mine said, ah, chairman, social media committee. <laughs> there is no social media. The just thing that this is one useless man who is wasting his time Simon's on social media. But I, I like to, I like to be that. Let us. There is a, a, a two wide gap between the rulers and the ruled in Nigeria. On a, between the old and the young, it's very wide and it's dangerous for our politics. Let us bring them together. You know, let us educate them. Let us provide them with information and then explain to them where the problems are and how the problems could be solved. And they are not bad. But because we are not engaging them, mm. that's why they are getting too emotional mm. and being abusive. On a final note, despite all the negative things we see around, do you still have hope for Nigeria? Ha! Huh, a big question. Mm. Well, hope for Nigeria. I pray that Nigeria continues to remain one. Senator <laughs> Baba Premier Judith, thanks for Thank having me. Thank you very me. much. Yeah. Thank you.